meeting to order. Um, if you could all uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I just want to note for the minutes that uh, Mr. Uh, Sisk is not with us this evening, um, and we do not expect him to be joining us from the sound of things, so um, we'll be missing him this evening. The first item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. I move the adoption of the agenda. All right. I have a motion and a second. I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Atkins. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, and then the adoption of the minutes from September, if anyone has any changes or a motion to approve. Hearing no recommendations for changes, I move that we approve the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Light. Uh, any second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. I abstain. I wasn't here. Thank you, Mr. Shull. All right, that takes us to the first item on the agenda, special exception 24-08-01, ALIF 12-21, uh, Tourist Home. Ms. Summers, would you mind to introduce that for us? Yes, thank you. This application is for 103 Bean Hall Road or identified as tax map number 12-21. This property is 144 acres in size and is owned both agricultural and conservation. Pursuant to 17036E and 17066K, the owner wishes to use this as a four bedroom tourist home and he is not here as he also has a residence in Colorado. His son and daughter-in-law do reside in Amosville and will oversee the property management if this application is approved. The health department commented that the records show that the septic has a capacity of a six-bedroom, 12-person occupancy with two septic tanks. The property requires both septic tanks due to the addition of a garbage disposal. The owner recently, in August of this year, had the septic tanks pumped out. VDOT commented that based on their field observations, the existing access meets the requirements. Staff has recommended the following conditions, a maximum of four bedrooms, 10 guests, no food service will be offered to the renters, the permit terminates upon sale or transfer of the property, and the property may not be subleased, rented by third party, or used as a timeshare. And the applicant is present with us tonight. All right. Uh, would, would you like to add anything at this time to the applicant? Yes, sir. I'm Greg Adler. Uh, this is uh, uh, my son Jimmy and his wife Lila. They're the ones that live in Amosville um, and will be taking care of things when I'm around. These are some of my neighbors who uh, volunteered to come and support nice. tonight and to say something kind about me. They need to. So I'm happy to, to answer any questions that, that you all might have. That was great. We, we may have some after the public hearing, um, so bear with us okay. and we may ask you to, to give us some more information. Thank you all for coming. Okay. Um, and with that, I'll go ahead and open the uh, public hearing on the A-List Tourist Home, special exception 24-08-01. If anyone has any comments they'd like to make regarding this application, please come to the microphone and identify yourself by name and the district in which you reside. And if you keep your comments under five minutes that's always appreciated thanks so much yes anyone yes Karen my name is Karen Hunt Jackson District on tourist home special exception applications we as a county have traditionally set um, occupancy recommendations based on the number of bedrooms the dwelling under consideration here is a four bedroom house um, the applicants are asking for a maximum, the maximum allowable number of guests under both state code and our ordinance, which is 10. That's generally reserved for a five bedroom dwelling. Our ordinance doesn't distinguish between adults and children. The health department when setting occupancy limits and septic capacity doesn't differentiate and defines limits based on number of persons. And so since that 
carries forward when a house is built and occupancy permits are done. That sort of flows through, I think, what we have traditionally done um, in establishing occupancy limits for tourist homes. It's important to consider precedent and deviating from it moves the line in the sand for other applications that follow. Uh, I just think we need to be mindful about that. I understand that the applicant has revised their house rules originally included in their application on page seven. Um, and I appreciate that. Uh, I'm just wondering if we typically actually spell out um, that other activities are permitted in conjunction with a tourist home special exception permit. I'm wondering how that sort of thing would work if we essentially grant the ability for renters to hold, let's say, a party or another event in conjunction with what is supposed to be a tourist home Airbnb use. So I want to be clear, I'm not opposing like a family member or friend of the short-term renter from visiting those staying overnight, um, but I have not seen this type of written statement in conjunction with the tourist home special exception application before. So I just want to be sure everybody's on the same page here that there's no misunderstanding or confusion by either the public, the neighbors, the applicants, um, the potential guests on anybody's part about what a tourist home permit allows. Um, I think the intent just needs to be clarified here to be, make sure this is not like a wedding venue or special events venue. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Anyone else wishing to speak on this application? My name is Matthew Kaplan, uh, Wakefield District. Uh, I live right down the road uh, from the house. Uh, Jimmy is out regularly, and uh, I, I see the care in which he takes care of the property. Yeah. Uh, and I, the reason I don't have much concern about this is one, it's a large property. You can't see the house from the road. Uh, probably wouldn't know when it was rented or not rented. And second, if I have any concerns, I'm pretty sure I could bring him up. I could call Jimmy or his father, and I'm sure they'd take care of him right away. So. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Alice Jones, and I live in Wakefield, and my property abuts to Mr. A. Liv's property. Um, I am more than confident that he will do whatever it takes to run a proper Airbnb. Uh, his family has much regard for the county, and one of the reasons that they do need to rent the property out is because his, his life situation has changed, which everybody's does, and he now lives in California, in Colorado, I'm sorry, with um, his family. Uh, his son Jimmy and Lilama are constantly coming out to the property, taking care of it, looking after it. Um, there are stewards of the land, as far as my opinion is. Um, I don't think that there's any malice in what they want to do. They just want to find an economical, economical way to preserve the property for the family in the long run. So um, I know if I had a problem or if I heard anything strange going on down there because you can hear it all over the place, um, you know, I could call Jimmy and say, hey, Jimmy, something's wrong and he would immediately check into the problem. I know that Mike and Betsy, uh, Betsy Deedle and Mike Sands, have also spoken with Mr. Aliff. They are not in town this week, and we have conferred, and, and they are fine with what he wants to do. So, unfortunately, they are not able to be here. But um, I, I don't see any problems in the long run. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that wishes to speak on this application? All right, if there's no one else that wishes to speak on the ALIF Tourist Home application, I'll go ahead and uh, close this public hearing. Um, Mr. Shulin, I think this is in Wakefield District, if you it would is. care to go first, or? I would care to not go first. <laughs> <laughs> this time. All right, is there anyone else that would uh, like to, to Kick us I, off. I just had one question. Um, the the apartment building uh, over the garage. Yes. Is, is that occupied? Um, it, it's occupied at times when it's the answer is no. It's not occupied except it's you know there's an apartment up there and 
that's uh, when we have family out and someone stays over there, but it's not part of what would be rented. Oh, so when the four bedrooms are all in the house. They're all in the house. Okay, I'm just curious because yes. usually we do have, we, if it's four bedrooms, it's eight. It's eight adults, but you're also thinking two kids. One of the, the rooms is probably set up for kids. One of the rooms is set up with both beds mm -hmm. for kids. Yes. And there's a fold out couch also. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Atkins, did you have anything? No. Uh, it looked like to me it um, meets, it, check, it checks most of the boxes that, that we look at. Um, <coughs> I think it's well located. Uh, like I said, I don't think it would interfere with any of the neighbors. And uh, the question, you know, the, the item about two extra guests, I don't. I don't really see that as being a problem because most guests, when they come out, they may have one or two children. And it looks like to me, letting one or two children come and stay and enjoy the view in the countryside is a benefit to those people, uh, those children, than rather a, a negative impact on the county. I would say, I, I don't know if you're agreeable to it or not, but I, I would be interested to know if, if there's an option to um, to say uh, max 10 guests, max eight adults. And then, the, and then the implication would be it would be eight or adults or less. And then the, the level up to 10 could be a mix of their children. That was the intent. I'm okay. Be happy to clarify. Okay. I think that would be helpful and allay some of the concerns because we do want to be consistent and have the number of adults and the number of bedrooms line up. And um, that just helps us be successful for future applications because we have that set pattern. Happy, happy to clarify that. That's also, great. Um, happy to uh, add as appropriate uh, that no events were permitted. That's great. You have such a clear voice. I keep forgetting to ask you to use the microphone. I actually think our microphone is picking you up just okay. fine, but you have a very clear voice. But okay. we do take minutes later, and sometimes okay. we don't remember everything. Yeah, I'm also very happy to clarify no, no events, wedding events, um, you know, um, whatever, graduation the types of events or parties of anything such as that. Well, I think that I, that wasn't really a concern for me because as yeah. I understand it, you still have to get a field party permit, which is only every couple of years. Isn't that right, Ms. Summers? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, yeah. that, that that covers events and you all can certainly have an event on your own property well, uh, by those guidelines. I'm more concerned with the fact that I don't want someone coming out there thinking Exactly. That they're going to have some sort of event and that therefore just restrict it and say, you know, no, no events like wedding events or anything are permitted. <coughs> that sounds great. And that, that at least my only concerns. Did you have anything, Mr. Light? <clears throat> no, uh, I will just comment that I'm not sure I've ever seen three separate sets of guests or neighbors come out in support of one of these. So yeah. congratulations. Well, for I appreciate that. Yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Henry? No comment. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Shulman? Um, my only question is, um, is there any agritourism currently going on on the property now? I know it's the sign out front. No. The, the only thing that's going on the property, I mean, it, at all, is, I mean, it, we have select cut it once quite a while back, um, a, number, a couple of, number of years ago, several years ago, I should say. And um, there's a few food pots. And that's it. There's nothing else other than that. I shouldn't say that. We have some fruit trees. So. It's a beautiful place. It is, really. Well taken care of. Good job. Thank you. I'm not concerned. That sounds good. Did you want to make the motion? Um, sure. <laughs> not to put you on the spot. I, uh, I move that we pass this on to the board supervisor to direct the recommendation of approval, right. um, clarifying the overall number of guests. So consistent. Okay, sounds good, Brian. Thank you. 
Do I have a second? Second. All right, thank you, Ms. Ritter. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you. Y'all are, are welcome to stay, um, but you will be at the Board of Supervisors for your next stop. Thank you. You're also <laughs> welcome, not just one quick question. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, is it okay to work with Michelle to get this language clarified? Absolutely. We encourage it. That's very helpful. Okay. We'll do that. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. That takes us on to our second um, public hearing of the evening. Special exception 24-09-01, uh, the Zhang Tourist Home. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Summers? Yes. Um, if, I will note that I revised my staff report and sent it out this afternoon, and I'll head on those few items um, in, in just a moment. Pursuant to 17036E and 17066K, the owners have made an application for a proposed four bedroom, four stone for the property located at 53 Weathersfield Lane, tax map number 3134A. This parcel is where the home, the parcel where the home is located is on uh, 25 acres, and that parcel is zoned ag. The owners also own the surrounding um, parcels, and in my staff report, I highlighted those in the in the pink highlight. Um, the subject of this application is in the yellow. Um, the surrounding parcel is totally in the acreage of 217. Weathersfield Lane is a private lane which only serves their home. Um, 53 and the other home they own, which is occupied by a farm manager. Um, it appears to meet type 2 road standards. The health department commented that the records indicate the property has a permit to operate a four bedroom, eight person maximum occupancy. The septic was last pumped out in May of 23. VDOT comment that the access and entrance meets their standards. Staff has um, Recommended the following conditions of maximum of four bedrooms, eight guests, no food services offered to the renters. Um, the third one, the permit terminates upon sale of the property. Um, it's up to the commission if they want to do it just for this tax amount number, if they want to tie all the parcels together. Um, there are more parcels that that private lane serves, but they are not developed. Um, so that's just, I'm putting it out there for consideration. And the property may not be subleased, rented by a third party, or used as a timeshare. And the applicants are also present to answer any questions. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Um, would you like to add any comment about your application? Yes. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, public speaking is not my strong suit, so I'm going to use this note. Um, Hi, my name is Jessica Jung. Uh, my family and I have had the privilege of calling this beautiful farm in Amosville home for over 12 years. We love it here and it means a lot to us. And so while, and while we're not there, we wish to rent this wonderful place out as a short-term rental to others. Not only will this allow more people to experience the beauty of Rappahannock County, but it will also help us cover the increasing cost of maintaining the farm so we can continue to care for this land as it deserves. We are fortunate to have Eric Klein, this gentleman here, our, who is our farm manager, okay. and he's also a firefighter and paramedics. And he, will be li he lives on site in a separate house that's five minutes away with his family. Him and his wife, Daniela, are wonderful caretakers and will be available to help our guests with anything they need to ensure their stay is comfortable and enjoyable. We're happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much and your, for your time and for considering our application. Thank you, Jessica. All right, uh, and with that, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing on special exception 24-09-01. Zhang, did I get that right? Zhang. Zhang, Zhang Taurus Town um, application. If anyone wishes to speak on this application at this time, please come to the podium and identify yourself and the district in which you reside. Um, same rules as before. Yes. My name is Karen Hunt, Jackson District. Um, I reviewed this application and there were a number of things that stood out. So one is the property records um, for the Commissioner of Revenue lists the residence as a four bedroom, four and a half bath, and um, the Virginia Department of Health notes a four bedroom septic. 
um, the applicants are representing the residents as having seven bedrooms. Yeah. Um, now the staff report says that the current home was constructed with seven bedrooms, but I think there needs to be some clarification of that. I met with staff this morning uh, to clarify the type two road requirement as that had not been previously addressed. And I would just like to suggest that um, given that short runway, um, uh, that while staff says it appears to meet um, the type two road standards, they may not have had sufficient time to go out and actually confirm that. And so I think that might be a good thing to do. Um, I think the fact that the applicant owns other parcels adjacent to the one that is the subject of this application may have caused that confusion. But that does raise a point though. Um, we have a clear precedent of um, special exception tourist home permits terminating upon the sale of that specific property. And I guess I'm just wondering if the ownership were to change with any of the other parcels that are referenced tangentially in this application, is that like something that should be considered? Um, like how would we evaluate that in the current moment? So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on the application? All right. Oh, you, you're welcome to speak. Uh, good evening. My name is Eric Klein. I'm uh, the farm manager who lives also on the lower part of that property. Um, I think something that I personally wanted to say here, um, which is important to my family and I, having the opportunity to do this is uh, it's a big deal for a number of reasons. Um, I came to live here about a year and a half ago, I would say, and the relationships that I've been able to develop in the county so far have been uh, very useful. One of the things I found helpful about this county is we kind of all were like separate from everything else going on, but at the same time we all kind of look out for each other and that's something I've noticed. One guy has a pretty hard time dealing with uh, about 217 acres, so uh, I've had to knock on some doors before and how do you do this, how do you do that, what do you recommend and kind of learn from the locals I would say if that's appropriate. Um, another big thing that you know we were, we were talking about when making this decision was that it also helps the people around us. A lot of people have cattle farms, a lot of people have uh, you know, good small businesses that are you know, either from mom and pop shops to up and coming places that we've been able to establish relationships with. And um, I know it's kind of outside of the rental per se, but one of the big things we've talked about is you know, specifically as like a treat for the guests. There's no other location in Virginia like this. I, I've lived in Hawaii, I've lived you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a native of South Boston. Um, I've been in the Marine Corps nine years, all over the world twice, right? Um, and this place is definitely where I plan on putting my roots and, you know, continue my family. So being on the property, especially, you know, long term, as we've talked about, is important to me. You know, I don't want nothing crazy going on with, with my kids running around. So that's, that's definitely something we've had to think about and talk about before we made this decision. And also going back to the small business portion, we have a lot of people that we've developed relationships with to be like, hey, when guests come, we can, you know, showcase your, your meat, your beef, your, your fruits, your vegetables, um, homemade gifts and stuff like that. So I think there's, as with the other, uh, I'm upset they didn't stay, but uh, I, I think that's a, another point that needs to be focused on with, you know, our, although our county is small and we're a tight knit group, it's also helpful to expand in a certain way where we're helping each other out. So I just wanted to point that out as an opportunity that we've also been thinking of and speaking of. So thank you. Thank you. Are those your cats, the longhorns? Yes. Yes. They're so cool. <laughs> Not scared. All right. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on this application? All right. With that, I'll close the public hearing. Um, this is in uh, Jackson District. Right. Would you care to go first, Mr. Atkins? Yes, I would. Uh, <clears throat> when I was there, uh, your walkway was not was not cleared open, and then there were some pavers that were loose. Has that now been corrected? Yes, we, we cleared them, all, and we're in the uh, process of fixing all the pavement and the patio. Yeah. There's oh. active construction going on. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're, um, because when I, the day that I was there. Oh, sorry. That's okay. No, just please use the microphone. Okay. But the yeah. day that I was there, and I actually talked with you, mm -hmm. and it was very difficult to maneuver up 
yes. the walkway. Yeah. Oh, after you left, we cleared it. Yeah, I okay. noticed. <laughs> we haven't used that front walkway for a while. We were just going from the yeah. garage, and we were so busy with getting the house ready and uh, fixing the patio and everything. We just haven't gone to the front side yet. Yeah, but it, now it's clear. You can walk up to the front door. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. And <clears throat> that's all the questions I have of you at this time. But. My comments are, I think this, again, fits and checks all the boxes. In fact, the issue of the comment about a type two road, I drove the road. The road may not be an exact type two road, but it's, it's as good or better than most roads that we, that we deal with, with tourist homes, and even some of the state maintained roads in this county. <laughs> So there's no problem with me on that. Now, I also commend you because you are a second party farmer. What that means to me is you own the farm, but you have a farm manager and you're actively farming that, that, uh, <clears throat> that land. You have cattle there. You're not a, because third party farmers fall off the table as far as I'm concerned. They're not, they're really not farmers. You are one, I'm trying to so I, I commend you for that. And I did, I did like seeing the cattle there and everything. And so, <clears throat> I really don't have, I, I don't have any problems with this at all. I think it's one of the best that we, one of the best applications we've dealt with in a long time. I like the location. I like you having your farm manager right on site. If anything goes wrong, he's right there. He can address it immediately. Uh, <clears throat> Now, I do have, I would make a recommendation as far as your car is going back out, I would suggest that maybe you would put up a, a right turn only mm -hmm. sign. Yes. And also I would suggest that you, you would get VDOT to put up a one way arrow so that when they come out of that, they have no reason whatsoever to turn left and go in, go in the wrong direction. I have dealt with that personally, on 211, people coming, and then they, they think they, they, they can go, that's just a two-lane highway, and they go in a direction they want to. So that would be my recommendation that you would do for that. Thank you. That's a good suggestion, Tommy. Any other? Well, I just had a question you? about the construction. Um, you're fixing the patio and mm -hmm. and the walkway, so th that shouldn't take much longer, right? No. Think, no, yeah, just prob problem fixing. Okay. Yeah, like little spots, a spot treatment. Yeah. So do, do you'll actually start running in a, in a short time. Yeah, hope to. <laughs> <laughs> Logistics. Yeah. Did you have anything, Mr. Schuller? I agree with Mr. Atkins. That was one of the things I was thinking about pulling out of there. Um, I don't think it should be a suggestion. I think it should be required. It, she has to have something. <clears throat> Whether VDOT puts one up or not, so, you know, that's on them. But, yeah, she needs to have something there. I, I don't know that VDOT will do that. Right. I, mean, I, would, I would put it I on the applicant. Which, I mean, it's yeah. not a difficult thing to do. Yeah, 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 we can do that. That's no big problem. And, I mean, you ask them, they do it, they do it, they don't, don't. Yeah. Mr. Light? Uh, I have really not much to add. I would just say with respect to the road, to me, that this only serves one ownership, even though technically it's multiple parcels. Uh, you know, to not get in the area of odd precedence to, you know, sometimes require it, sometimes not. To me, this clear distinction here that makes it moot is that this really is like a driveway to this property. So on that basis, it's not, it, it, it doesn't seem to, you know, it's not a, it's not a right of way leading to a, a road to the property. It is the, it is the driveway. So I don't see that as being an issue. I'll just add that. But otherwise, I agree with everything that's been said. Sounds good. Anything, Mr. Henry? Um, I agree with Mr. Light that the, 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 the access is not an issue. Uh, that driveway has been there for probably 150 years. There was a prior uh, two-story frame house there uh, that I was familiar with back in the 80s, and 
that was subsequently uh, raised and the new house built and the other house is, is, is an older frame house that's been there. So those, those roads have been there for a very long time and they've been improved as, as time goes on. And uh, I think it's a wonderful location for, for what we're looking at. That's close to the fire department, rescue squad in Amosville. You got a paramedic on site, uh, fronts on the state road, uh, tons of acreage, no, um, um, you can't see the house. It's, it's a wonderful uh, uh, location for this. And, and I hope the applicant pursues her interest in agro-tourism and, and, and maybe does more uh, in letting people come on the site, whether it's a farm store or raising crops or animals or, or doing something else that promotes the land and, and draws uh, people into the property. But uh, I think it's wonderful and the complete support of the application as is. Thank you, Mr. Henry. I agree. I thought the, the two applications on the agenda this evening were two of the cleaner applications mm -hmm. and in terms of acreage and uh, all the details of the property, you know, uh, a good fit for this use. So um, did you want to make the uh, motion for this one, Mr. Atkins? I will. <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we approve this application as as submitted with the, uh, in accordance with the, what the staff has recommended for the conditions. Also, I would like to, to just add to this that we need to the, that the applicant knows that they need to meet with the Commission of Revenue to uh, get the registration for meals and lodging tax taken care of. And also, I would like to recommend that the applicant has to meet with the treasurer of the county to make sure that that this they get the proper tax return information coming from the Airbnbs because we, we have continuously had problems with Airbnb getting certain information. So I think that that responsibility needs to be applied to the applicant, and not for the, and not necessarily for the treasurer to have to go seek, getting trying to get information from the Airbnb, which it doesn't work well at all. Sounds good. Uh, one way, sir. I, oh, no, one way, sir. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I also want to add that I, I recommend that you have the one-way sign and also a right turn only sign. Yes, Mr. Henry. So, okay, if um, I know what Mr. Atkins is saying, uh, and, and every one of these, they go the same path in terms of the Airbnb and, and, what, and, and the handling of it by the uh, the Treasury Department and Conditional Revenue. Um, and that path is worn, it's established, and um, the applicant is not going to change that path. Um, you know, I, I think if you do it for this one, you're going to read that verbiage into every one we do. Uh, I mean, it's it's a set precedent that, that is done on every one. And there, I know there's been issues on how Airbnb does it, but they're not going to change uh, their national, international policy for this dwelling in uh, Rappahannock County. So therefore, if it stands as it's presented, then if there's an issue, then it could be said that they're in violation of their permit. And I don't think that is the right way to do this. We know there's an issue, but it's they didn't create the issue and it's being handled because there are tens, not hundreds, but there are multiple applications that we're receiving income from every month. And if if there's it's a consistent issue if there is an issue. <coughs> but um, I don't think we need to single out this applicant for the verbiage that could make her in violation of her permit. Was that part of the motion? <laughs> uh, that's what. I mean, that's my question is, Tommy, yeah. did you intend that to be part of the motion? And are you, if it was intended to be part of the motion, are you willing to amend your motion to exclude that language? I, I will agree to amend the motion 
uh, to exclude that language, but I, <clears throat> as far as, as the motion, but I'm still asking that the applicant at least go to the Commission of Revenue and to the Treasurer's Office to see what information that they actually need. And no, I don't think it would be right to single out you if in order <coughs> if we don't start somewhere, then you we go nowhere. But I'm not asking that this be applied to your application that, that if they don't if the treasurer doesn't get the information, then we could we could uh, <coughs> suspend your application. Your permit. No, I'm not trying to do that, but I think that we need to at least start. And I'm just asking you to at least go to those two officials yes. and see what information that they actually need and then see if you can help them get the, the desired information. So, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so. going to second your. your uh, <laughs> What motion is the motion? for purposes of discussion. Yep. It's Tommy's original motion excluding the language about the Commissioner of Revenue and the Treasurer. So let's read it very exactly what it is. I mean, my understanding of Tommy's uh, motion, and you can confirm this, Mr. Atkins, is the conditions of the staff report plus the signage, the, the right hand turn signage, one way right hand turn signage. Right. That, that's correct. Okay. And my second remains in place yeah. with those with those conditions. So since we're on this topic, it might be worth a little more conversation. I think, if, 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 it, if I may, I, I think the point is this should be a reminder, and maybe we should do it with every application that we do have this issue with Airbnb where they collect everything, they manage everything, and yet they don't always share it. And I think the point, we, we all agree on it, it is ultimately your responsibility as the applicant to track and report the income and <laughs> deal with the taxes and not say, well, sorry, we left that to Airbnb. No, it, you're the applicant. And, and so I think the request is to specifically figure out those yeah, requirements. I don't intend to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, I went to the Commission of Revenue first when I started this process, and they said, oh, no, no, you should go to Michelle first. Probably I don't know where they're located, so I don't know. <laughs> they're all nice people. It's, yeah, it's a good place nice. to visit. You just need to plan to visit all of them every time yeah. you come. So <laughs> let, let's, let's just clarify. A lot of people come in here to, to apply like you're applying. And they've been caught. They they started renting and they never got a permit. But you're clean. You you've never rented. You've never been in in, in violation. You're doing everything right, and and, and you're going to start renting here in the near future. So she's done everything right. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. 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 So and she's she will continue to do that with her efforts here. It's much appreciated. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But some of the issues that we're talking about you know, is, is with Airbnb and with their lobbying efforts with Richmond. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's more of a county issue and a legislative yeah. issue than, yeah, yeah, than yeah. what she can, she, she can, she pays her money in, so, as does everybody else, and they send in one check, as I understand, that's, and it's not atomized. And, so. if, and if Rappahannock County thinks we're gonna get our way on this, we would be the literal tail that wags the dog. But yes, we can still is. require the applicant to figure it That's out. That's correct. They, they, have, they can keep track of records. So to me, we're to, to try to think that we're going to change Airbnb is barking up the wrong tree. Right. It's that we need to establish the, 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 the responsibilities of the applicant. Maybe we should circle back in a uh, roundtable discussion and, and, at, and uh, talk about some reporting mechanisms yeah. Sorry. or updates on those. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we'll Good see way. you next at the Board of Supervisors. And, uh, when was that? Uh, December, the first Monday in December. December. So we'll look forward to seeing you then. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Ms. Summers. And you're welcome to stay if you like, but you don't need to stay. 
All right, that takes us to uh, the public comment period. If anyone has anything that they'd like to add on Mr. anything. Mr. Yes, sir. Is there a next meeting in November or December? The next Mr. meeting of the Board of Supervisors is November, but due to the noticing requirements for special right, permits right. or special exceptions. Well, I guess you, that your, your construction will be finished. <laughs> 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 Your application won't be heard until December. Okay. And that, that nice couple uh, with the ADU yeah, that was great with child, they showed up at the Board of Supervisors meeting this oh. month, they, and she's still pregnant. Oh, oh my God. God. So, uh, <laughs> so they, showed up, they showed up at the October board meeting thinking it was their turn, and they said they'd come back in November and maybe the baby would be there. So. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that takes us back to public comment. Anyone that would like to speak on uh, any number of things, uh, please come to the microphone and address your comments to the commission. Please state your name and the district in which you reside. I don't know how to lower this thing, but anyway. Uh, Anita Ramos, Hampton District. Uh, just a quick thing. I mentioned this to the Board of Supervisors the other day. Um, there was a water study done here in Rappahannock some years ago. My late husband was involved in it, and it's still very close to my heart. And after the drought we've been through, and are still really in somewhat of a drought period, I, I want everyone to, if they can, go back and look it up, because it's, it's in the board packet in, in the, in the um, documents somewhere. Um, and the funny thing is today, I was listening to the radio, and Orange County, I think the town of Orange actually, which gets its water from the Rappahannock River, they're talking about needing another alter an alternative place to get water. And of course, Washington DC is thinking about the same thing when it comes to the Potomac River. So uh, this is not a new idea. Um, I, I worry very much about the situation we have in this county because we have only one place, Little Washington, that really gets a large amount of water. But the, if the rest of the county dries up, which it almost did this summer, um, where we get our water. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Anyone else wishing to speak? Yes. I'm a little taller than Anita, so I'll move this up. So. Um, I don't have any prepared marks, but I want to just comment on the contractor yard ordinance. Okay. So that came back to you guys from the Board of Supervisors. And there were a lot of really good improvements in that. But one thing that concerns me is um, they decided to remove any reference to any, um, lim uh, any, any number of vehicles or equipment. So that number reference is now gone. There is also no height reference. And about a month ago, I was coming back from Costco, winding my way down over by Nissan Pavilion or whatever they're calling it now. And there was a yard that I saw, and I, I need to go back and take pictures so that I can visibly show you guys. But they were using it as a storage yard for like shipping containers. Mm -hmm. And they had them end to end to end, and they were stacked at least too tall. And I just, as I was, it was a shock to me. I, I drove by and just went, wow. And so we're, I think the premise for removing the reference to any numbers of equipment was that somehow now that we're not considering a level two, that the, you know, the, the acreage, the um, 20,000 square foot maximum of outdoor storage space would somehow contain it in itself. And I just think we need to think outside the box a little bit because people can sometimes be creative. And with no height restriction, how much could, you know, if someone decides they want to stack a bunch of shipping containers because I've seen it. So just a thought for consideration. Thank you, Karen. Anyone else that would like to speak? That's Diane. Diane Bruce, Piedmont District. Just thinking about the application you had here, um, I'm wondering, do you all send a copy of these special exceptions to the Commissioner of Revenue and the Treasurer so they know? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, Annie, I think that's everybody, unless Luke wants to say something. <laughs> 
All right, and with that, I'll declare the public hearing closed, or the public comment period closed, excuse me. Um, that takes us to uh, zoning ordinance amendment on contractors' yards. Um, this is something that we sent up to the Board of Supervisors, I guess, three months ago, um, and asked them for feedback on uh, what we were, the details we were working through. And this is uh, the language that they've requested that we send back to them. Um, the main change is basically the elimination of the more intense use category and the minimum lot size um, kept at 10 acres, therefore, and the um, setbacks increased to 250 feet and the elimination of the counting of vehicles and equipment uh, was eliminated. I think when um, Mr. Curry did the math with um, 10 acres for the minimum and 250 foot square, uh, square foot or foot setbacks, the, the max amount of acreage that would be put into the use would be like three and a half acres. Um, so that's what the, the board has requested. Did anyone have any questions? The next step for us would be to advertise this for a public hearing. So um, why did the board drop the number? Because it was just too cumbersome? I think the with all of the other factors that we can take into account when reviewing an application, like the nature of the business, the hours of the business, that all the equipment has to be in good working order, right. and um, only equipment that pertains to that business can be part of that application. Mm -hmm. There were so many levels to already work through that it seemed adequate to review it in the in that light. Yeah. Um, the height, I mean, we talk about effective screening, uh, down shielded light, and any other factors that we may deem appropriate to ask for details about. And so I think that's probably why there's no height limit in there. Um, well, I was thinking also with the number of vehicles, I mean, what do you you know what do you count as a well that's that's yeah. always my conundrum because yeah. you think about a snow plow and then you could have other attachments for the truck right exactly. so what pieces do you count and if you're cap capping it at 50 yeah that's going to end up adding up very quickly yeah. so um so but the site size is twenty thousand square feet right yes okay yeah that 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 is a very small area, and that is, is, the, is a tremendous cap right there. Yeah, that's what I think, too. Yeah. And isn't it also the case that if a specific application comes in and in the review we deem additional uh, conditions for approval appropriate, whether it's height or number of whatever they're proposing to do, we ha are not sacrificing our ability to set such a condition on the application. So to me, it's really not about taking it out. It's more a matter of not feeling like you could predict it in advance with sufficient clarity, and it's leaving it as an option for us as we go forward, is the way I, I interpret it. Hopefully that's not inconsistent with the expectation. I think that you're right on and that it's the belief that there's other tools in the drawer that we can use to um, work through those details. So what is, I'm sorry if I missed it, is there an action for us to take? Uh, we would be advertising it for public hearing. Okay. Yeah, good idea. Do we need to vote to do that or anything? Yeah, I think I we move that we, uh, I, I move that we advertise this for a public hearing. Okay, thank you, Mr. Light. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hendrick. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, the next meeting, correct? Yes, please. Thank you. Well, I say yes, it was your motion, Mr. Blank. Yes, please. <laughs> Just don't check. Unless we have a doozy of an agenda. Do we have a doozy of an agenda? No, not yet. 
Good. Do, All right. Define doozy. <laughs> That takes us to uh, the next item on the agenda, the ordinance transient lodging discussion. Um, thank you, Michelle, for working on these um, edits and drafting new language to incorporate what we had discussed. Do you want me to hit the highlights of this real quick? That would be great. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the draft um, that you have before you tonight, which would be the last one listed on board docs, um, what is highlighted um, only is new text, and what has been highlighted and stricken through has been deleted. Um, yeah. On page one, uh, for instance, conference center or resort, um, adding the, the language meeting areas, um, country inn, retreat, and lodge, adding which may be offered in one or more structures. Um, then on page three, I have eliminated um, the transient lodging, um, such as country and comfort center resort and tent campgrounds for the conservation zoning district. Great idea. Yeah. And then on pages four and five, um, keeping the road standard the same as with short term rentals and B&Bs, the language of the type two. Uh, inserted in under all the different uses to keep them all the same. So for country inns, um, tent campgrounds. A tent campground not in conservation? Yeah. So in the middle of the field? That'd be eggs. But conservation is more your steeper, steep slope areas of the county. Yeah. Uh, I guess um, right, I'll right, stop right there. Camping goes on too. Oh, but this is a campground. I, I mean, it, it would be a. I think that's a different beast than the passing through random campers. I can I can see the uh, conference center being taken out or resort. Um, and maybe country inn retreat or lodge being taken out but there are properties in the county that um, are larger in size that typically when you enter the property you enter on ag land and towards the rear of it it will be uh, conservation. conservation land mm -hmm. and um, it seems that that is probably going to, well, if you look at the park itself, if, if the park was in, was in Rappahannock County, all that land would be zoned conservation. Mm -hmm. And it would be no campground. Well, there's campgrounds up there which shows it can be done. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if, if that shouldn't be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. It might detail a, a good site plan, but I, I would hate to think that you, you took that right away. It's never really been used, but like many, many years ago, maybe Mr. Atkins remembers this uh, because he lived in Sperryville. I mean, there was a campground on the Kilby farm, as I understand it, on, on the right-hand side. Right. And, you know, that might have been conservation today. Correct. So, Thank you. Uh, don't know. Or, you know, somebody has a, you know, it, that, that property up Old Hollow that, that we approved for an Airbnb that had, that used to trout fish there. People used oh, to right. trout fish there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you, if you took that property and, and, and you had a, a tent, you know, tent, tent ground there, would, would, would that be bad? Don't, wouldn't it depend on, I mean, it's one thing to have tents, it's another thing to have recreational vehicles and campers going up there. It, it seems to me you'd have to make a distinction. Well, it says tent. What is the definition of tent campground? Are we careful that that only means tents? I, I wonder. It's certainly implied, but is there a definition of, there is not a, I thought there was a, a definition of whether camp or recreational ground. Yeah, yeah camp or recreational ground. Yeah. Does that include RVs? It does, but it doesn't say tent. 
So I Since think camping trailers, self-propelled campers, tents, or lodges. So it seems we have a stickier issue of, you know, <coughs> differentiating a tent campground from another kind of campground. Right, exactly. Yeah. Could we fold it into that same definition and say two types of campgrounds exist in the use table, tent and what's the other one called, travel trailer? Um, campgrounds and allow tent campgrounds in conservation. We can. I think uh, I, I think that I might think be that the way to get real. around it. The use table distinguishes between the tents and then the camper style and the use table. So yeah, we do definitely tent campground as a special exception use under conservation. I think that would be reasonable, and and I do think it would help. I know we're not seeing all the definitions here, but yes, to clarify that it's sort of tent campgrounds are limited to just tents, and then other is not limited to just yeah. tents, because if you start trying to think about all the other things that might show yeah, up right. in, a, in a campground, I, I think you might, we might get stuck, but um, at least we should be able to narrow tents to be, you know, tents. That sounds like a good distinction to work on. To me, Michelle, is that clear enough? To yes. You? yes, ma'am. And then, um, and then, should we add travel trailer campgrounds to the use table? I'll show that in the next one. Okay, yeah, absolutely. And then, um, my only note was um, seeing a lot of these travel trailers on the road these days. They are really big, and sure. I, um, I kind of think we should have. Some of them are really small. <laughs> <laughs> no, but most of them are really big, Brian. Really big and and really I, I think that we should have a, a higher road standard for them because, I mean, I, I can tell you, even coming through Sperryville, they're they're immense. Well, there must be there must be a way of distinguishing. I mean, some of them are just like little tiny um, trailers that attach. And others are, are huge. Yeah. Well, again, I would suggest one option would be, since it's a special exception use anyway, that, again, we could consider limits on the size of vehicles in the conditions for an individual site based on mm -hmm. whether it seems conducive or not. I mean, I, I, I know there's always a desire for clarity, but I do think we have that that flexibility and it, for these things that are site specific, um, I, I, I sometimes think that's the better option than trying to imagine all the scenarios and all the possible different sizes. I yeah, I, uh, I mean I understand, and there there is a way when reviewing the application, I'm sure we could tie the the length of the vehicles to the Something quality of the road. Yeah. Um, because even that ADU application, going back there the other week and seeing the trailer that they managed to get down that road. Yeah, it was um, surprising. Yeah. We wouldn't want to see that coming in and out. No, regularly. no, not with those curves. So um, that was the only, the only note that I had. Um, well, the other thing I had a question about was um, just for conference center, We've got conference center or resort, conference center, convention center. Do we want to just strike conference and say convention center so that it's clear what the distinction is? Because they seem like two different things. Yeah, if, if we're including conference center or resort for those that are, oh no, it's more than 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that distinction between the conference center in the first definition and conference slash convention center in the second is, so they have different use tables. Yeah, because you could have a convention center that didn't also provide overnight facilities. Um, I'm just looking what's in the country in retreat or lodge. 
which actually isn't what's defined. What's defined, oh wait, conference center or resort. So where is that in the use table? Is that there? Mm -hmm. That's actually there. Oh, that's there. The one that's not there is the conference convention. Is that by design, Michelle? Do you know, or is that a? I'm not really for sure. <laughs> so we're saying we don't. That. That's not an allowed use. In other words, is that what that's intending? That we're saying we don't want a conference slash convention center. I mean, that seems to be what's implied by something that we define as a use and don't allow it. Retail, commercial center, minister, people use. I mean that. It feels like it was almost written to be big things like we don't want. <laughs> it kind of has that feel to yeah, it. Yeah, it does. It does indeed. <laughs> so you think we should just strike it from the definitions? Well, I don't know that it should be strike, stricken from the definition because with it in the definitions, we could declare somebody's use. Sorry, that is a convention slash... Uh, conference slash convention center, and we don't allow those here. That's not okay. a use that's in our permit. So, if that is in fact the original or our current intent, I, I think it works. But it's interesting because I'm not sure. I hadn't really thought about it in that light before. I say, so to clarify for the one part of this, we do in our use say we want tent campground and travel trailer park. In this instance, we have conference center or resort, country and retreat or lodge. And conference center. But we do have the okay. yes. So where is it allowed? Conference yes. center is allowed only by way in the general commercial by special exception in the Conservation and Act. We didn't pull it in though because it's not lodging per se. Correct. Uh, okay. So I guess this, the only case I think I can remember of, of this was when Cole tried to do, do his Culinary Institute out here at the edge of Little Washington on Harris Hall Road. That did not have any lodging in it, if mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah. And uh, uh, Castleton Farms, do they have an application for that great big uh, building over uh, on 618 going over like to Hope Hill? That they big, did get an event for that, is I that believe. A, but is, is that a conference center event? Uh, for I have that? to look that one up. So I guess this is not maybe a untypical thing that we've never touched before. Yeah, I think it's worth asking ourselves if we want to say that these things can be conservation zones, just like we just asked ourselves on the lodging, but it doesn't seem like there's a consistent... And basically, the country in retreat or lodge and the um, comfort center or resort are extremely similar, except your country in retreat or lodge is only up to 40 people. Yeah. And then your conference center or resort is for more than 40 people. Right. Well, you definitely don't want that in the conservation. <laughs> but right now, it seems like it would be allowed under special exception if I follow what you said. Is that up? Uh, so I took, it, took that, those uses out of conservation. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. The and, okay. and that, I think, just to follow back to where this dis discussion started, is loosely based on the ecotourism right. resort that we reviewed earlier this year. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. We're now a little bit around the edges of it, but they're similar. It's similar thoughts. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it doesn't seem sensible that we would want to entertain something like a conference center or conference or convention center in a conservation zone based on this definition. That seems incompatible. Right. Were there other highlights from the work you did, Michelle? Um, again, on pages four and five, underneath the different uses, um, 
I know like under tent campground and the um, the RV campground, their requirements started out the facility shall have direct access by means of a travelway 20 feet in width to a road currently maintained by the state. Uh, where some of these other ones, like for example, the Country Inn Retreater Lodge, they had no road standards. So in an effort to keep some sort of uniformity between all the transient, um, I pulled the language from tourist homes and B&Bs yeah. um, and then inserted it into the rest of these transient. I thought it was a good idea. Okay. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's, it's much simpler and straightforward. Well, it's interesting even to think about what if we're talking about a tent campground, what the facility is actually referring to, right? Because it's, it's really just a bunch of tent sites. So. I wonder what the logic was for the road frontage requirement being 200 feet on a state maintained road for the travel trailer park. So we only had one common travel trailer park in the county okay. off Air Mountain Road on Blossom Lake. Um, that one goes back a long, long time. Oh, I don't even remember. The court order, um, they were trying to do this. The church was trying to do all these campsites. They got into a lawsuit with the neighbor, um, and this was a way to kind of prevent, because the road width up through there was not 20 feet. Okay. Yep. So are we now propose? Does your markup eliminate that? It does. It takes it takes that language out and keeps it. Just standardized between yeah. all the different transient uses. It's just the type two roads. Yes, sir. I go back thinking a couple of years ago when we beat the crap out of that guy over there on six forty seven Crest Hill Road that we wanted to do. Uh, Two campsites. <laughs> two tents. Two tents. And yeah. we just beat them to death and made them, you know, he was, you know, he had a, a burn ring at each one. We, he already had a hot running water bathroom and, you know, we, we made him put a quarter john at each site. And, <laughs> uh, you know, and I thought it was, you know, he had a vineyard there. And I, I thought it was kind of a cool, cool thing where, you know, two, two people, two, two, Families, a family and a couple of kids go out there and put up a tent and, um, you know, and have a campfire and, and, and on 50 acres. And I thought it was very low impact. Uh, but I guess under this here, he would have to build a $100,000 road before he could get back to, to do that. With the Type 2 road, going 300, 400 yards. Yeah, I was kind of thinking about the uh, Cherokee Station up at Chester Gap, where nobody drove, everybody walked a thousand miles to get there, just to spend the night, and then walk back to the Appalachian Trail, carry on. He was just running as a hostel. Yeah. yeah. He had the only car, and he drove you downtown and brought you back. Is that something you have to go before the BCA and ask for uh, this is your variance on the want any of that? I guess, you know, I see a lot of, of I think about a lot of farms around this county that would be be, be kind of interesting, nice if if they could have a, a campsite for one or two people, a couple of people that uh, but maybe that's not in the cards. Uh, that they could rent out for 50 bucks a night or whatever, and give them some income, and be a wonderful experience. No facilities, no impact. Kind of like a golf course in Sperryville on residential land. You know, it's not being used, and it's it, it, 
produce something. I don't, is it possible that you know, a comment could be made that road standards could be waived on a tent campground based upon the size of the camp sites or the board decision? Well, do you do you have issue with the original language? Should we just leave it at the original well, language? We can, and we can do whatever. The I mean, or the, planning the the again to get back to the original tent was to was to have sort of logic line up that if sure. that if if you're doing something at least as intense a use as the Airbnb for which we have a road standard, but there's these more intense uses for which we have n n little to no road standard. We need to reconcile that so we aren't leaving ourselves open for issues down the road. So I think arguably a tent campground is less intense use than Airbnb and could, you know, be due to the low impact nature of that use in certain scenarios, um, we could have a lower road standard. I think that's reasonably debatable. Well, completely out the, or revert back. The, I would say this if you was talking about a hundred tents. <laughs> yeah, right. that's what I was going to say. I'm, I'm all good. fine for road standards if you're talking about <laughs> three, four, five, something. I don't think it's it's there. Well, and it's also different, again, if you got a bunch of tent sites spread around a lit property, yeah. where do you need the road to? Every one of them or just to some central area? I mean, that feels, <laughs> it does feel different, the idea of somehow a primitive tent campsite. We have a, a member of our vast audience that, oh, oh. maybe two. Let's uh, reopen the public yeah. comment. <laughs> Yes, I think Diane, your hand was up first. Yes, I, well, I'm sorry. Diane Bruce, Piedmont. Love the conversation, but if you had tents all over the place and not, not much of a road standard, do you need to think about emergency vehicles and fire vehicles and things like that? So maybe there could be a need for a better road, even if you only have five tents. Just a thought. Thanks, Diane. I was thinking of them getting stuck <laughs> in the brains, and then you're yeah, stuck there right. in your tent. You know? <laughs> Can't get out. Yeah. Peter Ramos, Hampton. I'll, I'll be the counter to that. You're talking about road standards to come to the property itself, to the edge of the property, not on the property. You could tell people that if they want to have a whole bunch of tents or a tent way on the back of the 50 acres or whatever that they need to make something decent to get to it. But your road standard to the property itself, right. hold on that, t t that number two. But once they're on the property, then you can say, oh, well, if this is what you want, then we expect you to upgrade somewhat on the property itself. But Keep the road standard. In fact, when you get to some ideas like conference centers and all, you're going to want a bigger road standard in the long run, if that ever happens, which it could. So anyway, and uh, no, <laughs> no, no, Karen, there must be something good. Thank you. Thank you. Are you going to close it again? Thank you. Oh, I'll close the public comment. Thank you for the reminder, Gary. Um, it is interesting now looking back at this language. It does feel like that travel way 20 feet, and if this came about when we were talking about those, it, this was imagining access to the sites in a way of protecting, I think. Um, although it's not, it's certainly debatable and not very clear if that was sort of like the standards, but 20 feet feels like it almost must have been imagined to be the way you get from one campsite to another, because it wouldn't have really even made sense with respect to the road getting to the property. So they may be trying to address two different things that we should be thinking about. As Anita points out, one is getting to the property and where it's used so that we're dealing with the overall traffic flow in and out and the second, which is access for health and safety and emergency <coughs> vehicles to facilities that are dispersed on the site, which now that we've added 
resorts can be in multiple buildings, that whole topic of where things are around the site and how accessible they are to emergency vehicles in general is probably something worth talking about. But I don't, yeah, you know, I don't know that I have a clear suggestion for what to do with it. Well, I think we also we're looking at the possibility of a couple of different types of yeah. tent sites. You're talking on item two there. You're talking about providing electrical outlets in each individual site, one or more central travel trailer, sanitary stations, and toilet and shower facilities. That's one type. But you know, here in the country, we can have. A very plain, simple yeah, walk in, inside. flat spot right. equals tent you, site. You, you, can, 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 maybe, can we take a field trip next month to Page County <laughs> along the Shenandoah River? I think they got every type of campsite over there that That's you true. can think of. We did? Yeah. We yeah. yeah. Every, sure. type, every one there, uh, down to a, looks like a Vietnam bamboo, you know, <laughs> yeah. Mekong Delta, all the way up to the. Yeah. Uh, you know, you really want to encourage us to see this and have they to even figure out which we want and which we don't want. Hey. <laughs> They've even got the old Woodstock type. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we were making progress on the other ones, but this one seems to be a bit of a rabbit hole in the campground. I, I just look at it and think maybe we should just use the original language. If it's a if it's a type two road to the property, I don't have any problem with that, you know. And then once you get on the property, you address the roads by the intensity of the use. That's okay. Then we can leave this one out. Well, I guess that's what we have. Ground. Okay. That means if you visit later. Well, and again, if we get this is this is never by right, is it? Is this ever by right? No. So we would always have. The ability to, nope. to deliberate right. this right. in the context of a given site. So, as written, it seems it gets us the, the type two standards to the site, and that leaves us to the site specific safety considerations and maybe neighbor considerations because I can imagine frontage and other things could become issues with a specific Is site. A yeah. So maybe it is okay if it's a special exception. Maybe we deal with all of those things in the context of the conditions. And I can see this is a case where the complexity of the site plan may be elevated too. Yeah. I mean, we're not we're not limiting our ability to make those requirements. We're just again not trying to pre predict all of them and set rules that apply universally. But the type two roads, so as written, it does require the type two standards to mm -hmm. the facility. So. I guess I'm back to thinking it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's, yeah, if it's a type two to the site, then I'm okay with that. And and then we are talking about having the special exception back on for conservation, for conservation, for conservation for tonight campground, but out for convention slash public hearing and you can get yeah. public hearing and then you hold yeah. one. Right. That you can then you'll get public input yeah. from a public hearing. We should. It seemed like there was a setback that was really, when we reviewed the eco resort, one of the setbacks was a really low number. Was it 200 because of conservation? <laughs> no, it was. Oh, if you look on the screen under E2, which this is on page four. Oh, 10 feet, 10 lot 10 feet. Line. Yeah. 10 lot line. Mm -hmm. Well, what page is that on, Michelle? Page four. I remember that being a specific sticking point for that application and thinking, wow, if it really is that low, we should probably increase it. It's E2. Yeah, now I see it. Okay. Yeah, 10 feet. <laughs> it's, and that makes me, it's so incongruous, it, or incongruous, it almost makes me think somebody left off a zero. Yeah. Because everywhere else it's right. 100 right. feet. And yeah. you need 20 acres to do it, so you're going to have it right up 10 feet from, yeah, I, that's a it, very good that, point. I think it probably should be the same setback as if it was a house. Oh, accessory building, what's accessory building? Same as a house. It's 100 feet? Yes. It should be 100 I think feet. You're right. I think, it's zero. <laughs> so I, just, I think somebody I left off a zero right, and right. it got That's adopted and, um, until we reviewed it in the eco-village, it probably never came up. 
I think so I, can. yeah, I would support that if you yeah, I think that it seems like there's a number 10 campground. Number five, no structure campsite should be located closer than 100 feet. Yeah, okay, right. so there so, that's what I, I just right. I think it should be consistent. Oh, we have nailed in, an, in a number that's not 10. We have, we have nailed it now. Yeah, <laughs> 10 is like, are you kidding? It's easier, it's easier to measure. <laughs> you walk that one right off. <laughs> So my intention in putting this on the um, on the agenda t this evening was not to advertise it for a public hearing yet, but to have a discussion about it, which I think has been great. And Ms. Summers will bring us um, revisions for next month, mm -hmm. at which time we can advertise it for a public hearing. If, um, everybody's on board with what we see. All right. Uh, the takes us to the data center amendment discussion. There's no, I don't have anything to report there. It's just a place marker with the other work that we had on this evening. Um, I have one question as we move. Hotel motel, if um, hotel or motel shall be deemed to include any establishment which provides residential living accommodations um, a more or less permanent basis. What's the difference between that and an apartment? I mean, what makes that a... Anyway, I looked it up and just kept going round and round. Well, such as an apartment hotel. I mean, what is an apartment hotel? We don't have them. <laughs> do, do Makes you wonder what happened in 1991 when that was changed. Well, I think you have to look at the earlier part, which says it's for transient use. I'm sorry, maybe I missed the question because it's for transient use specifically. Yeah, but then it did then short term basis, but then it says provides residential living accommodations for on a more or less permanent basis. I mean, that's not a transient stay. Oh, I think it's, I think it's intended to be a permanent structure, like a building, that provides transient lodg lodging. So I didn't think of it as the, the lodging being I permanent. I think it's an apartment that's potentially rented out on, on a short-term basis. That's multiple units in a building. It's part of the place I stayed in Michigan. We were there for 10 days, and it had a kitchen, a full bath, and a bedroom, and every unit was like that. But, but again, I think, with dishes and everything. I think the key point, though, is the second part doesn't negate the first. It still has to be for transient okay. lodging. I came back. <laughs> you did. We're glad to have you. But it's a, it's a complete unit, and it's multiple units in a building. Which will also be included. Well, it just struck me as inconsistent. Maybe we could add, such as an apartment, hotel, rented for transient lodging. Maybe we could bring it back if that troubles you in some way, because I think that's implied that it's talking about different structures, any of which might be used for transient lodging and therefore be a hotel. And I, I think that seems to me to be clearly the intent, even though it's a lot of words that don't necessarily get you there, especially if you start parsing it. Do you, do you think the change was maybe from the change in the nature of hotels yeah. and motels? Because they used to be much more like a room and a bathroom. Yeah. And now you're likely to find suites and things yep. that are much closer to apartment living in a hotel, which is as when, I, as when I read it through in that context and the, in the early 90s, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, and again, is used. the key element is it's used for transient lodging, which is defined pretty well, daily, weekly, or similar short-term basis. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Did that help, Steph? That, that helps. Good. Um, all right. 
Uh, we have the list of direction from the zoning ordinance amendments from the board of supervisors. Um, any items for discussion? Did you want? Did we want to talk more about the commissioner of revenue and treasurer um, getting an update from them or make, asking them if their reporting is? The board of supervisors should be on top of that. Well, I don't disagree with you, and I'm happy to take it to the board. I mean, they should be on top of that because they they got to get our revenue. Well, and the revenue reports are good, um, which leads me to think there's not a problem, but it's always good to ask. Yeah. I mean, that's I think squarely a board supervisor. Well, I will, um, I will take it to sure. the board, and I will also speak to the commissioner and the treasurer and... Um, and just let them know our discussion and see if there's anything. Um, Does the BOS have concerns? I don't think we do. Our revenue reports are very good. And um, I mean, it's always nice to have more detail, but uh, if we're getting a nice check on a regular basis, you don't ask how many there's pounds? not a whole lot to complain about. You don't check the, the pumps, how many barrels of oil is being pumped? You just cast a check? <laughs> Uh, it, it, like I said, it's, I'm not sure that even if Rappahannock County alone wanted to have a lot of sway, we would be able to exert our power over Airbnb. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know that they care what we think. Um, but there may be a friendly way to um, get more information from applicants. Uh, any other items for discussion? I have, I guess, a question, comment, to <clears throat> Did we have any COVID area money left? All the COVID money has been folded into the general fund. Well, the reason I bring that up is I just recently uh, saw here town of Warrington was using their extra leftover COVID area money to upgrade the sanitary sewer and water system. We've got a problem with Rappahannock. I know you you've been working on it, but we went through money, but look and finding money, but it looks like that should be an area that they should look in and pull some of that money from there too. And that would be nice. I think that we've, we've I guess we've seen and heard a lot of this COVID area money came about. It got handed out like candy all over everywhere. It maybe didn't get to the right place to where it should have been used, but this looks like it would be a good place that it certainly could be used. Yeah, and I am surprised they still have it because I thought there were time limits on. I think it's mm -hmm. the end of 2025 is the timeline mm -hmm. that it needs to be spent. There's some wrapped up in the broadband project. And so that, that has some ties attached to it. Um, but, you know, the thing about those deadlines is that also they tend to get extended. True. <laughs> so. You don't send um, the money back? <laughs> <laughs> or just give it to you? Not, not when it's wrapped up in projects they want us to do. Um, Speaking just out of curiosity, um, now you brought something up there about the broadband. Um, has there been any indication from the uh, the prime contractor here that due to the time delays and the advancement of Starlink, that Starlink is affecting the, uh, the market share that they're going to end up with? You know, we don't have a direct line of communication with the contractor um, in a way that's on the record because we entered this agreement and it's I'm, I'm happy, you know, put a quarter in the jukebox, I'll sing for you all night. I'm not sure how much detail you want to get into um, on this. It's always a good question. Um, you know, we entered into it through part of the regional commission, of which we are not a member. Um, we entered into it through um, the Shenandoah Valley Regional Commission, which operates out of Warren County, and we belong to the regional commission that operates out of Culpeper the Rappahannock Rapidan Regional Commission. So we, we and we're the smallest uh, county in the agreement. 
So we are, we are really, really on the outside of the agreement. And there was supposed to have been an update in September in a regional meeting. And um, that has been postponed. And um, All Points Broadband has said repeatedly that they will be furnishing updates to the county more regularly. Um, I don't believe that is happening. And they seem to be encouraging um, individual updates rather than large scale updates on the record. So I, I don't have really an update for you. I can tell you we have gotten um, our regional initiative recommendations from the regional commission asking for their endorsement. And one of them is more money for broadband projects. And um, that was an addendum item on the last board meeting um, agenda. And I, I think that the projects are flush with money. I think what they're lacking is oversight and accountability. Um, but since we're, we're twice removed, not being party to the, the final contract with all points and then also not being a member of the regional commission. Um, that's where we've positioned ourselves. So. At what point will the, uh, the board be concerned that all this money <coughs> is just flushed down the toilet? Well, I think, I think you know that I've always been concerned about that. Um, and that's why I ultimately didn't vote for it. Um, I couldn't vote for it. And I, I don't think that there is adequate um, protection for the county in the contract. But that is, you know, why we vote as a board and time will tell. I've talked to a couple of people that install uh, Starlinks and they, they just say somehow just one of the services and there's only been, they know of one failure of being able to get service in the Rappahannock for Starlink, and that was in a very, very steep hollow. Yeah. That, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't work there. But uh, in, uh, this, this, this weekend, I was working with some people that were looking about buying a property in, in Rappahannock, and that usually comes up, and they were uh, just out of the military and, 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 and doing technology, and they said that they wasn't concerned that yeah. Star Lake was going to be. It's basically visual. opened up the whole county. Yeah. And and really, when the other comment that I'll just mention before we move on is that I did bring up at the board meeting. Um, I we lived in Georgia for a, a decade, and I have a number of friends in northern North Carolina uh, that was more affected by the flood and uh, the terrible, terrible hurricane down there, and the people that were up immediately and back online and able to communicate were the people that had generators and Starlink because all the terrestrial communications were wiped out. Power wiped out. But if you had a generator and Starlink, you could communicate and people would, you know, throughout the neighborhood came to them to be able to call their loved ones or, or send a message. So, um, Anyway, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to extol the virtues of Starlink too much. One other thing on broadband, Madison County, they they went with Farfly. Yes, sir. And they're rapidly everywhere. Yes, and Link in Orange is doing very well as well. Okay. So. Just to get off the soapbox, <laughs> just go back to repeat. The county signed a bad contract that had no teeth in it. We had no, no dog in the fight, so to speak. Well, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the next update brings. But I do continue to monitor. Uh, any other items for discussion? All right, Rex, ne next regular meeting is November 20th. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. And second? A second. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you.